well, one of the most anticipated fights of the year. It'll, it'll end up, it's probably one of the biggest cards on paper, um, just because of Nate Diaz and, and how big a star Kamzat is as well. Happy days, we're right. back. We're back, episode 13, Tanked Up Podcast. Don't forget, go to our Patreon, link is in... The, the description bio, is the there. The description on YouTube and on the bio on Instagram. If you want some behind the scenes, if you want some training tips, if you want some free signed shit, yeah. then go to our Patreon. But yeah, we're back. Me and Joe again because uh, it's Friday afternoon and we can't right. get on to, to meet us at the studio. Nice sunny day in Wales as well. Where else would you want to be in the world? Nowhere else. Come where, on. Else, you want, where else would you want to be but in... Uh, podcast studio in the middle of Garland. Nothing else makes sense to me. No. Ariel Owen is not far away, mind. We have had rumours he's in Wales. Yeah, Ariel, you could have let us know a little bit more in advance who was coming. I but mean, it's Triple H or is us? What the fuck? Easy option. Not on. Easy pick there. Not on. What have you been up to anyway? No, not a lot, but just um, busy week. Just training, really. Training, but bit, bit of running about. Um Back to normality, she's still shaking the buyout of the <laughs> system. I think it's finally gone now. Is is it this class as camp for you now? Or no, not just... yet. Um, we've got about, well, I've, I've got 11 weeks. Well, this is obviously going to come out after, but I've got 11 weeks tomorrow. So I won't go into camp till about probably nine weeks because I find anything more. You start to peak a little bit too early and then you find you end up picking up little niggles towards the end of camp, whereas I find like eight or nine weeks. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm... I'm still training two, three times a day, and I'm still doing the hard set. I'm still training the harder sessions like I would in camp, but I'm not quite as, you know, strict in terms of like I'm not running quite as far as I would run in camp. Yeah. I'm, I'm not do like you know if I drop a session through the week, you're in a, you know, I'm kind of allowed. Or if I wanna, like, if I wanna miss a grappling session to go and do S and C because of my schedule and stuff, then I can do that. Um, and then eight weeks out, obviously, I dial, really dial it in then. Um, just less structured then at the minute. Yeah, less structured. Not a, it's still intense, but not as intense. You know, um, I can still go out and enjoy a little drink <laughs> for another week, two weekends with the boys before uh, before I got to lock myself yeah. away. You were out last weekend? Did you say? I, yeah. What did I? Yeah, I did go out. I went out with um, my missus brother Liam. Uh, he he had a he had an operation yesterday on his chest. So oh, right. wish him we wish him a speedy recovery as if he as if he hasn't as if I haven't spoken to him like but um yeah he had one last little rock thing he's he's bed bound now for four weeks it's quite a seri- serious op so um went out with him the armor Jack the armor Marshman joined us oh, yeah he was in time was he yeah Liam's old man and uh, one of my old training fat partners stroke one of my oldest ever friends stroke my old boss uh, Kyle Prosser come out with us as well so. Was not nothing crazy, but we had a good uh, we had a good laugh and uh, nice little nice to relax really. It was nice to go out because I didn't want to go out um, bank all this and next I wanted to train Monday, so it was nice to uh, to find a couple of people that would come out with me and uh, yeah, and, yeah. and slum it on the Saturday. <laughs> yeah, everyone. Well, I'm surprised there's not a ton of people who were going right through, but there were a few. Probably not so many there, people there in were your a crowd. Few, I suppose. There, there, there were a few. Um, they were a few in town that had been out Friday, we're out on Saturday, and we're going out tomorrow as well, uh, you know, last yeah. weekend. But, uh, yeah, it wasn't nothing too... It wasn't like a Project X or, a, or an hangover type uh, night out. It was just a nice casual one with the boys. So it was nice to relax a little bit. Yeah. Hey, Jally's mate. As, <laughs> every know. year that goes on now, I'm more like, I just want to sit in a room with people and have a laugh. <laughs> I don't want to, like, have loads of random people there, like, because it just ends up... Yeah, like, especially as well, like... It gets sometimes it can get a bit if if town if Appleby Town is busy it can get a bit much for me. I got people and you no, know, we just like I don't ever like to not chat to people and and mm. not if people want a picture or whatever. I don't ever like to say no, and that's my problem a lot of the time. Is you can go out on a night out and there are a lot of youngsters and stuff that do want to chat and sometimes when they've had one yeah. too many drinks, a five minute conversation can turn into a twenty minute conversation, and you do laugh six seven times throughout yeah. the night. I bet um, we you and Marshman both there as well. I yeah, the... so um, it's nice sometimes to just stay at the local and you know go out when it's a little bit quiet that way. You're not gonna have so many people, but um, yeah, it, it was a good one. It was uh, no hangover either Sunday, so I can't complain. I don't know how you get away with that, mate. There must be something going on there. No, honestly, God, I'm 27 now, so obviously I've been probably going out with the boys since I was or drinking then since I was about 15. I think I was 15 when I had my first drink. Um, 
my first proper drink anyway. Yeah. And I've ne- I've had probably two or three hangovers in twelve years. Like, and I'm not exaggerating. I, you know, we drank a fair bit last weekend. It wasn't like <laughs> not like I'm having four sneaky vodkas and sneaking off home. Do you know what I mean? I've had nights where I've, I've woke up the next morning and thinking, how am I not hangover? Um, but it could be vodka's pretty purified, from what I remember someone saying. So like, and, and obviously because I'm drinking it with like diet coke. Perhaps it's like one of those that just kind of just goes straight through you. But then I know people who drink vodka and they're absolutely fucked the next day, so yeah, I don't know. It depends what you're drinking with, I suppose. I usually drink it with Red Bull and that pretty much. Probably if you have... What happened there? <laughs> if you have 10 Red Bulls anyway, you're probably going to feel shit the yeah. next day, aren't you? It's uh, it's definitely not genetic because my old man is love two pints and, he, and he's bed bound for two <laughs> days. Thinks he's been poisoned or spiked. Or I think pints are the worst though, aren't yeah. they? Like. Oh, they, reckon yeah. they don't clean the, they don't clean their lines like every so yeah. often. Do they? It's pretty some annoying. some pubs do it on purpose, and they they don't clean the lines so that uh, people get more pissed and want to stay longer. But anyway, well, we better uh, we better switch it up from the drink talk for people uh, to turn it <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Although you know, it's probably more people can relate to that. I would imagine than the yeah. I, 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 well, I think be, everyone's had a drink, haven't they? There'll be a few people drinking uh, next weekend and this weekend with the fights as well. I'm sure. Yeah, definitely. So. Well, we're going to talk about Nathan Cam's at first, yeah. is it? Yeah, well, obviously, we're not going to go over the Paris card because it's Friday today. The card's tomorrow. This isn't yeah. going to come out till fight week. So, um, sorry, people on the Paris card, we're uh, we're doing the dodgy on you. But, uh, yeah, straight into it. Um, next weekend, probably, well, one of the most anticipated fights of the year. It'll, it'll end up, it's probably one of the biggest cards on paper. Yeah. Um, just because of an eight Diaz and, and how big a star Cam's at is as well. Yeah, definitely. And, um, yeah, fucking... It's kind of flown under the radar a bit, though, for a... doesn't feel like... You know, like, leading up to Cam's at's last fight, they had the Smash Bros, all yeah. that. Seemed to be a lot more hype building on that one than this one, if anything. S- same with, Nate, with 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 um, Diaz. Like, his last two or three, I think, when he fought, like, Leon and he fought um, Masvidal and mm. Pettis, you know, he was putting out a lot of content and... UFC obviously is a big pay per view draw because of the McGregor fight, so they were putting a lot of stuff out on their socials, a lot of YouTube stuff, and like you said, same with Cam's at his last two fights. They, they, they've been, you know when he fought the Leech and when he fought um, Gilbert, yeah, they, they were massive. Um, seems to have flown under the radar. I, I couldn't believe I knew what date it was, obviously, but I couldn't believe that they, they hadn't been more out. So no, it feels like it's just round the corner. And how's it cropped up? Maybe maybe one. they feel like the fight almost. Sells itself really, um, yeah. But it is weird because you know we we Nate we Nate Diaz fans on this podcast. But a lot of the general consensus for this fight is that Kamzat's just going to go in there and, and kind of bulldoze him. I I don't necessarily think that will happen. I'm not saying Kamzat's not going to win. Um, I am going to say that, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's your prediction, is it? I can't root against Nate's- Nate. But what I'm saying is a lot a lot of people. They almost, like, you know, the general consensus is, like, why, why is this fight happening? Cam's that's yeah. going to kind of go in there and wrestle him, either finish him or, or wrestle him for five rounds. So it's not really a fight that kind of sells itself either because a lot of people probably uh, are convinced they've got to predict what's going to happen. Yeah. So it's a bit of a strange one from the UFC. The undercard is is not mental strong either, is it? I've seen... Uh, um, Ferguson's like, fighting. You've got Ferguson Lee and, 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 and Lee. You've got They're co-main, aren't they? Which is yeah. kind of, like, yeah, surprising. You've got Kevin Holland is fighting Daniel Rodriguez, yeah. which... To the hardcore fans, like us, is a very, very yeah, good that's fight. A great fight. But yeah. to your, to your casual who's, who wants to look at the pay per view card, it's probably not like mo- I, uh, most people probably know Kevin Holland, but they know I know um, D Rod's very good. I think he's five and one in the UFC or six or oh, six and one should be six and zero. Oh. I think the fight where he fought Dalby won, but um, not many uh, like of your casuals are going to necessarily know he is. I think he's fought for a year. Um, yeah. So that's a bit of a mad one. I'm surprised they didn't pad the card. I, I'm surprised they didn't try and get um, the Poirier Chandler fight on that card. Um, I'm surprised they didn't even put a, a title like a, you know, like because the bantamweight title was meant to be on that card. Originally. It would have made more sense, I think, to leave that on there. Unless they're thinking like it's Nate's last fight. Everyone's going to tune in anyway, and they've kind of stuck. Because I, I haven't looked past them top three fights to be honest with you. I'm not sure no, exactly no, I mean, who was fighting underneath that. So <clears throat> I'm wondering if. Um, is it a bit of saltiness as well mm. in terms of obviously Nate gets Nate being the star he is he's bound to get pay per view points. Yeah, I don't believe he would fight otherwise. Um, so is it is it kind of like a spite thing? Like oh well, your last fight when up when they're gonna promote it and make any extra money. Um, so yeah. yeah, but at the same time you would guess that they would want people watching Kamzat because 
he's obviously the next big star. They they've almost pretty much said, haven't they, that if if the Usman rematch with Leon doesn't happen, he'll be the winner of the weekend. Which, which is crazy, isn't it? Because what happens if Nate wins? <laughs> they're, they're not even thinking about that. No, it doesn't look not. like, does it? And in, the, in I seen Leon Edwards in a um done a like an interview and he was like, if Nate wins, he can have the fucking fight, no problem. Um, yeah, that'd be amazing. And he, he said he got a lot of respect for Nate. Like, and look, we can't ever count. Um, you can't ever count him out because we've seen him do it. Like you, you think um, he's done it countless times in the past. Like look at the McGregor fight. Look at um, even if we look at how, how Leon just knocked out Usman, and you think as, as much as Leon dominated Nate, you know Nate had that little bit of we yeah. we rocked him and nearly put him away. And imagine that was the third round. Like why does that fight? Oh work? yeah, I, mean, I know you know I'm just throwing random things in the air there. But. Yeah, or imagine it was the first thirty seconds instead of the last. But you know, regardless of all that. I don't, I don't know how people can count him out. So stylistically, it's not a great fight for him. I think it doesn't take a genius to work that out. You got, he's always kind of struggled with a wrestler, isn't it? Um, yeah. And I do believe after his last fight, comes that is going to come out and wrestle. I don't think he's going to try and prove a point and come and try and knock knock Nate out. Um, who, who, who the fuck knows, really? But stylistically, it's not a great fight for him. I, I don't think. But at the same time. To count him out after some of the comebacks and some of the mm. fights he's been in over the years is, is crazy. Um, yeah, well, you think to yourself, like, if, if Nate can put the pressure on in the last rounds, like, because he, not that he was fading, but it, he was definitely not the same fighter in the fifth against, like, Burns, was he, as he was in the first In the third, yeah, yeah, well, that was a three-round fight, the Burns Oh, sorry, fight. yeah, so, yeah, three-round fight. So, exactly, I mean, Kamzat has never been the five rounds, um, but... You know, he is a freak. Let's be honest. He's a fucking freak. He's a, he's he is an animal. You know, there's no he's a different kind of fighter, he's a different kind of specimen. You only gotta look at him the way he fights to to he's just a fucking machine at the end of the yeah. day. Um but if anyone's gonna in, in my opinion, if anyone's gonna make a fight of it before before Usman and Leon, because obviously them two are that good mm. and Kobe, them three are that good that they're gonna make a fight of anyone. But apart from them three if, if, if there's anyone else in the division that's going to make a fight of it for Kamzat, I think it will be a guy like Nate who, you know, he is an orthodox. He fights a little bit weird. He is unpredictable. Um, yeah, I don't feel like they're overlooking him either. Maybe that's why they're not putting as much media onto this fight. Yeah, I've seen um, his coach come out and said, um, what's his coach's name? Andreas, I think, the the All-Stars coach from Sweden. Really good coach. And he said the same thing. He's like, you know, we, we're not overlooking him. The guy has fought everyone and he's, Pulled out wins multiple times where he wasn't supposed to pull out wins. So, yeah, don't be thinking it's a walkover it's, it's, for sure, isn't it? It's definitely not a walkover. It's a favourable fight for Kamzat in the eyes of the general consensus. But you know, that's at the tank that podcast. Yeah. We're uh, well, if we're if we're betting on this one, I think I owe you a tenner. But I think I, twenty you, owes me. Look, twenty, is 20 it? owes me. Yeah. If we if you're going Nate this time, I think I, I you know there's a high possibility I might get my money back this time, whether you like it or not. <laughs> yeah, well, all right, then that's the next bet, Nate. Then uh, Nate, I'll go Nate. You, you go Kamzat. If this one pulls out the bag, what about winning both? What ways? about the other fights? Tony and Le- I. I don't think Tony's going to win that. I don't think. Go on, and I'll go Tony as well. Yeah, right. Yeah, here. Here we because are. I was quite. Um, although he got sparked against Chandler, I think Tony. He did look really he sharp. Looked good. Yeah. He looked bad as all well. so, and I think the weight cut, that like because this is at one seventy. Obviously, I don't mm. think the weight cut. I think that would be a big factor. What about Kevin Holland? Do you know enough about that fight to want to bet on it? Well, yeah, I'll... you go Kevin Holland. Yeah, I'll go Kevin I'll go, Holland. There we go. You obviously know more about it. Than I me, go D Rod. <laughs> We're back with the bets, the boys. The bets are back. We Watch go. Out. We go free free bet parlay. So drop drop in the comments who you guys are going for. And yeah, uh, yeah. G- if give, you're siding with me, back us. Up, yeah, back us. Back me up in the comments. There's bound to be a couple of Nate fans that watch this. Well, they're all your fans, so they're going to so back they, you they up. So they gotta be. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, good look, good card in terms of like for your hardcore fans. Probably not the most out there for the casuals, but we'll be tuning in obviously, and we'll be, we'll be watching. Um, yeah, it's a belt, isn't it? And uh, I should have worn my Nate Diaz. I was going to wear my Nate Diaz um, t-shirt for this podcast. Are but... you staying up for that one then, or what? No, I watch yeah. it. I don't ever stay up from because. They're that li- fucking late. By the time the main event comes on, it's like five o'clock. I'm like legitimately shattered and mm. I don't enjoy it. I just want the fight to finish so that I can, well, so that I can go to bed. The last one I stayed up for was McGregor Mayweather. Yeah. 
And I was, what, five years ago? Yeah, I, I get up about half six, seven anyway, so... Yeah, well, I'm usually... I don't up. feel like... I, I, I hit BT Sport before I've hit, like, Instagram or whatever. Yeah. Just so I don't That's get screwed it. over. If anyone wants tips for not having a fight, fight spoiled, put your phone in sleep mode. Just wake up, go downstairs and watch the fight back. Yeah. In all fairness to the um, the BT app as well, they don't put, like, no spoilers on the home screen. It, it, it's all um, it's all neutral stuff, it like, so, so, so get on that. But yeah, I wonder who'd be. Uh, I, this weekend would have been a good one to do a live stream because it's uh, in Paris. It's like seven o'clock start or something, isn't it? I think it is an early start. Yeah. Yeah, that would have been a good one. But you off out on the piss again, is it? <laughs> well, it's uh, it's the first home game for my beloved app, Larry RFC, and I got a couple of boys who I who I sponsored uh, playing as well, and they had a little bit of a shindig afterwards. So oh, nice fit. It's not it's not set in stone. I'll definitely be watching the game. We'll see what happens after that. <laughs> right out. Let's have a... What's next? So, obviously, we haven't even talked about it, but your fight has kind of been announced. Is it announced? My alleged fight. Your alleged fight. My alleged fight. Say, as it is, is it? Yeah. Can you, can you say Yeah, we can go into it a little bit. I mean, um, fuck it, everyone else seems to be doing it, doesn't they? Uh, yeah, another good fight. Another tough fight, but like I said, I've had a fucking tough fight for the last fucking five years, it feels like, so... Yeah, great, good, good matchup, good stylistic matchup. I think Kyler, um, he brings the pace. You know, he looks for finishes. He, he, he's not gonna come out in there and try and outpoint me. Um, and coming off my last fight, I don't. I, I'm in the mindset that I'm probably not. I'm not gonna do that either. You know, I'm gonna mm. go in there to try and uh, try and get the finish. And um, no doubt he'll do the same. So it's got all the makings of a of a great fight. I think stylistically, there's areas I can. Um, don't want to say exposed, because it sounds disrespectful, but there's areas that are favourable for me. There's certain probably areas that, that he feels are, are favourable for him, but he's like an unorthodox strike guy. He likes to spin. He's like explosive. He comes from weird angles. I'm a little bit more of a, like a traditional boxer Thai style. Um, so I think that always makes a good clash. And he can wrestle a little bit. I don't think he, he wrestles as well as I do. Um, but he's very good off his back. You know, he, he's, he likes to chuck up submissions. He's active. And he's constantly pushing for, for, for submissions on the floor. And um, that, that always makes for a fun fight when, when I'm involved. So, yeah, hopefully we get a crowd. Hopefully it's uh, yeah. hopefully it's not a fucking Apex show. We don't know the location yet. Um, allegedly, of course, all this, you know, if it is happening, which we ain't confirming or denying, if it is happening, then then, then it's obviously all relevant. If, it's if not, the rumours are true. If the rumours are true. If they're not, just throw it away. Um, but, yeah, fingers crossed if the fight is as true, if it is happening... We get a crowd and we don't get chucked in the apex. Yeah, fingers crossed for you, mate. Innit? That's what that's what's needed, really, isn't it? Do, do you find you're a different fighter when you're in front of a crowd compared to like the apex? Or I, I don't know if I'm a different fight. I just don't like that fucking vibe in the uh, the and I, there's, there's no reason. Cause I've had two good wins in the apex, but it's just kind of like a sparring match and it's so quiet. And the last one weren't so bad. It was like hundred odd people in there, but to me, it's just like. I don't know. It's fucking like I, I've had two. My last two fights have been in front of fans. Mm. The the atmosphere for both has been electric. Even in New York, where I was in the hometown fight, they had a big pop off the crowd. The crowd were enjoying the fight, and um, it's almost like why? Like it's shit now to go back and then be behind, yeah. not behind closed doors because there will be people in there. But it would be nice. It would be nice to um, to kind of get 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 in front of a crowd again. But on the flip side, that the good. The pro of it being in the Apex in Vegas is that you got the PI and you know you ain't worry like the weight cut's always easier because the food and that you can use the PI. You ain't worry about like going to some shady little fucking uh, hotel gym to, to to cut weight and stuff. So, but I would obviously prefer I would substitute all I've meant I could fight in front of a crowd. Yeah. There was rumors of Sweden um, a couple of months back, and I think it was for this date. Wherever they do that, I know Gustafsson lost at London, so I would have guessed that they wanted to kind of build him up as main event day. Um, Would they wait to see maybe what Hamzat does then? Maybe again, potentially. They... Potentially. The only worry you got there is... Who's he who who does he yeah. fight? They, I did see Dana saying Kobe's looking to fight real soon. So if obviously Hamzat beats Nate, um, could, could that, that could be a, that could be be a awesome, fucking main event. Yeah. That would be wicked. Fucking well. Not, Even if you could put Till in probably Sweden now, couldn't you? You could, after, you could definitely... Like a Till and Manson fight would be a big... Um, yeah, yeah. Because that was meant to happen in London. Till versus Manson would be a big fight. Till be a, is a big draw where every fights. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Till and Manson would be a big fight. Um, 
I suppose you'd have a good feeling if they were building up a UK card. Yeah, it seem an to be Arnold that Allen, good. an Arnold Allen main event, like an Arnold Allen against um, Josh Emmett, or uh, who's the, who's the other one? Rod, Arnold Allen against Rodriguez, yeah. or um, Arnold Allen against Bryce Mitchell, someone like that. That would be a great main event in uh, um, in Sweden, like. Arnold like, Allen's what, what dad against Dongano or something like that. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> a big piece. <laughs> what's like? Cause what's it? Two hour flight to Sweden? Yeah, I don't one or far, two hours is it? not far. So I've never been, but you, you get plenty travel over there. Um, so fingers crossed. If the if the rumors are true, <laughs> that does happen. Right. Well, what's next? What have we got next on the agenda? So I know a lot of people think it's, it's bullshit and everything, but they had like the KSI fight. Well, well, to be honest with you, his fights were the worst out of the lot. Yeah, you're gonna have to take the reins on this one because I I know. Very little on this, other than that KSI fought twice in one night. Yeah, he won both fights, and apparently the the opposition wasn't very <laughs> wasn't very good. It's one of them, mate, because he he just wanted to get back in there. He's trying to line up that Jake Paul fight. So what's his future. what's his skills like though? Can he box, or is he still quite raw? Because I did I have watched him fight Logan Paul, and I know that was probably what four years ago. Yeah, he's better than that, and and he was, but they were both for it. And when yeah. you when you got two guys who are raw like that, it always makes for a scrappy fight. And the second fight was that a draw? Or uh, I think he won the second. The first was a draw. How the fuck did he win? Was that when Logan Paul knocked him down and then he had the he, points took off? Yeah, the, the points fight? taken off. Yeah, yeah, like the they robbed Logan. In the back. They, they did. robbed Logan Paul that yeah. fight. That was bullshit. He did. And I'm not just saying that. I'm not. I'm not, not a KSI fan. I don't really. I don't really see a lot of KSI because. I see more like Logan and Jake Paul because I'm big into boxing and, and they kind of have like their take on the UFC and stuff like that. So I see more of those. Um, but I've watched the full fight, not just the highlights. Yeah. And the, Logan Paul won the second fight. I think so as well, yeah. But they, like you say, they kind of robbed that off him. I think it, was it in the UK or was that in the yeah. States? No, no. For one of them, I think the first one was in the States. <laughs> I think the second one was in the UK because yeah. Eddie Hearn promoted the second one, didn't he? True. Yes. I tell you what though. KSI don't want to fight Jake Paul. Not right now, anyway. Not, not any time. Probably not any Not any time. There is a level of difference. That's another, well, that's another topic we can speak about anyway. Cause. Not any time, because uh, Jake Paul is very, very... I'm not saying he's a world champion level boxer, but he's, if he's good enough to fight guys like Woodley and Tommy Fury and Anderson Silva, which looks like it's going to happen now, you've got KSI, who I know he did the boxing years ago, but he hasn't trained... Like, like Jake Paul's been doing this now for four years as a job. He hasn't been trained like I don't think as he's kind of come into it like the last couple of months to fight again. Yeah, well, that's to be honest with you, what he said is he's been doing it on the sly, but yeah, I don't know how much bullshit. true is that is. Do you know what I mean? Bullshit. He'd be get he's been releasing like number one hits and things. So I he's don't rapping think, like, like, like I don't know why he's bothering. He's it's a, like an yeah, ego. It must need, be an ego thing in it a bit. He doesn't need the money. Surely he's, he's got like, all these number one songs. He's massive on YouTube still. I'm guessing he's got that prime yeah. with with Logan Paul. I just seen they've sponsored Arsenal, so they yeah, must be yeah. raking the cash in. Um. Yeah, like, I don't know why he wants to do it. Like, one thing I did see on um, Instagram on the reels was that he kind of, like, called Jake Paul and Andrew Tate out in the yeah, in, yeah. In, in in the ring. And then when they asked him about fighting Jake Paul at the ballot, like, how soon do you want that fight? He's like, oh, I don't want that fight for, like, another year yet. And He knows he'll lose right now. you got to remember, least. like, you know, to say he's not ready for him now, but, like, if he's going to get better over a year, well, Jake Paul just going to stay still? Do you know, it doesn't work like that. No. And... Again, I didn't watch the fight, so I can't really comment on his skills. But to be honest with you, the, the guys he was fighting, you're not going to take a lot from it anyway. No, and exactly. think like, Oh yeah, he, he could do well. So were they? The one was a rapper. The oh. one was a rapper who got who had like three weeks' notice, <laughs> who'd never like trained before, all accounts, and it looked like it. When he was punching him, he was literally spinning round Jesus. trying to get away from him. And then the other one was a pro boxer. I'm not sure if he was like three and zero. Well, they had one guy in. Which ended up being like he a couldn't neo- have been a pro boxer. Well, this pro come that, on. This this one guy who was supposed to fight him ended up being like a white supremacist, so they ditched him and got this other guy in. Like, in the and last this other week. guy was a pro boxer. Yeah, but he was he honestly, mate. He looked like a like a twelve year old pencil. It was yeah. So either he wasn't a pro boxer and they're lying, or he got paid a massive amount of money to yeah. Well, like his to take a dive. Let's his just pro say boxers it. and his pro boxers. I think like he may have had one or two pro fights and. He's just been... He, he probably looked exactly like that, just beaten up. Yeah, look... He, he probably hasn't got a decent coach who's got I'm him I'm not anyway. fucking buying it. He's a pro boxer. I'll just say it. I'm putting it out there. I'm not buying it. No. And it, it doesn't look... You, should, you need to watch it anyway. It's terrible. Yeah. Look, and also... Jake Paul is good. We can say what we want, right? He's not knocking out Woodley if he hasn't got some sort of skill set. 
I've watched him spar with uh, that Raheem. I know Raheem. Is it Raheem Jr.? Yeah. I know he was taking his time, but he could who can see even then two years ago he's got skills and if he's confident to jump in the event, this is a test for him. Let's let's skip from that bit. But him and J- him and Anderson Silva in October, as old as Anderson is now, and he is a little bit over the hill. Like he did just beat Chavez Junior. This is real fight. This and is whether, real fight. whether we want to say uh, Chavez Junior wasn't training or he's a part of the animal now and he's past it. Doesn't matter, he's, he's still a two-time world champion. Even if you're handed a world title in some extent in boxing, because it can happen, you know, where they, they, they play it in your favour so you win a world title, It's still he's still a two-time world champion. And he's fought people like Canelo and, and, and some other really good guys. And for Silva to go in there and knock him down, I think he did, and, you know, kind of just, like, looked like Anderson of 10 years ago. Yeah. Fair, like, let's just say it. Credit to Jake Paul, because there's, there's easier fights out there to take than Anderson Silva, in my opinion. Oh, 100%. Even though he's 47 or 44, whatever he is, there's, there's easier fights out there to take. Yeah, well, you could have, like, a, arguably, you could have took the Andrew Tate fight and probably made a ton more money. Oh, a lot more money. Just a lot more money. Especially, in, now he's cancelled in a way, you kind of want to see it more, don't you? You want to see the press conference, you want well, to see... Yeah, I think that, that probably drives a demand up for him, doesn't it? If anything, he's probably happy, he's been, like, an Andrew Tate, we know... Um, He's a very smart guy in terms of marketing and stuff, and I'd be very surprised if this wasn't part of the plan to get cancelled because what happens now is it drives a demand up for him. If he does come back, what happens then? Everything explodes by 10. And like you said, Jake Paul could have fought him and probably sold a lot more because the build-up for this one's going to be mad because Anderson doesn't speak... He can speak English, but he's broken English, and mm. Anderson's not going to engage in a war words with him. It's got a kind of, he's got to be respectful to him. Surely, I don't yeah. see how he cannot be. Look, and he's got a kind of, it should be a decent undercard, I, I would assume, to twelve sell it. Yeah. Um And don't be surprised, don't be surprised if Jake Porto has a bit of drama beforehand with someone else to help people tune in. They're trying to get Mike Perry on the undercard, aren't they? Because Let's he called this. him out. I'll see. I love so I think that's that. what they want to do is they yeah. want to line up that story. Yeah. Because Mike Perry would. If they were in a press conference and they had him, Anderson Silva, Mike Perry, and someone else, you just know them two yeah. are going to go back and forth. Oh, and let's you? put this, I'll put this out there now, right? Let's see if I'm right on it. I got a funny feeling one Andrew Tate may be ringside for that fight. Yeah, that, that would be cool. Because I'm assuming it's happening in America. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm I would sure. assume it is. I mean, if Anderson's out there, you know, Anderson's last couple have been in America, Andrew Tate can get into America, I think. Don't be, I'd be very surprised if he's not ringside or mm. mixing around the area fight week and, and some kind of uh, fest is there. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see if I'm right. I uh, I just got a feeling. It'd be funny anyway, wouldn't it? It's a, yeah, so it's a weird world without him in it now. <laughs> without the top G. <laughs> but to be honest, I seen um, Logan Paul talking about him because he said they were actually in talks about fighting. Andrew Tate and Logan Paul. Yeah, at one point, but it's that's not like again. Like I'm not just saying it. Like I don't want to sound like a lick ass, but he's a, he's a four time kickboxing world champion. I've seen like videos of him sparring Luke Barnett and stuff on um on YouTube, and even now he's he's still all right. He's not fucking. He's not Anderson Silva's level by a long shot. Do you know what yeah. I mean? But he can strike and he can punch hard. Again, he hasn't trained trained properly for a lot. I think he's fought properly for a couple of years and. No. When he did fight back then a few years ago, he was against a bit of a lower level competition to what he has fought. But he's a lifetime martial artist. He's obviously been in it, what, 20 years? Yeah. So I think Logan's take was he's not going to take it because he doesn't agree with all the misogynistic stuff and he doesn't yeah. want to give him a platform. Yeah, well, but that's that's fair enough. I mean, that's... I get where he's... I, I, I think again, he's playing the game there because he's a massive show, social influencer. He doesn't want to, like, piss off Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. And let's be honest, right? Logan Paul's not afraid to fight any of these four fucking Floyd Mayweather. So, yeah. uh, again, regardless of the size, if you're going in there to fucking box Floyd Mayweather... Well, when you've just fought KSI and you've lost... Yeah, and you fought, you're yeah, go next fight, let's, let's get into with Mayweather. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if they'll ever fight Jake and uh, and Logan. Oh, well, they have talked about it, like, a dozen times, because they didn't get on for a bit. Oh, they? yeah, but I wonder if they'll have a real fight, like... Uh, because I know they're friendly, but I wonder if they will actually have a proper sanctioned professional fight where they both... Is there any coming, like, it's a weird one, though, isn't it? <laughs> How would you do it? Because they, they're quite... Yeah, I couldn't, ima- like, I couldn't imagine doing that with my brother, like, full on. <laughs> it would be weird, do you know what I mean? I yeah. Think. But, look, that's a big... 
Never mind the line credit the fucking Jake Paul for taking the fight. It's a, yeah. it's a fight that people are going to want. And, you know, we can't really... Like, the only problem he's got again is if he does win, people will kind of... Um, they will discredit him a little bit because they say, look, oh, well, Anderson's 40-something and he's an ex-MMA fighter. Let's not forget, man, Anderson has had four pro boxing fights as well. Um, yeah. I, I did a poll on, the, uh, on my Instagram and it was something like... 85% of people reckon Anderson's going to win. So Yeah, well, if I had a bet, I'd pick Anderson. Yeah, so it'd be interesting now to see all them people, if Jake does win, try and run it back. Just on ring, just on ring um, generalship. Because he's not going to land a wild shot on Anderson. Yeah, Anderson's too... Especially with the big gloves. And Anderson is coming to the end of his career now. He's very defensive. You see that in the Savage fight, he was kind of in mm. the corner, calling him on. And that's what Anderson will do. He'll, he'll kind of like lull you into thinking... I'll just fucking flurry him, mm. and, and he'll counter. And, and don't forget, Anderson Silva got one punch knockout power. We've we've seen it how many times. So and Jake's like a counter puncher anyway. Yeah. He? So, so I, it's, it's weird how he's going to approach it because you watch the Woodley fights. He kind of stands off Woodley, didn't mm. he? And, and would throw his single. You can't fight Anderson like that. If you don't set it up, he's going to counter punch you all day long. Anderson won lead the dance. He and and don't be afraid. I won't be surprised to see him throw away the first three rounds, just fainting and moving and. Could be a really boring fight, to be fair. I think it will to start, because I think Jake won't want to... Jake will either rush him and, and flurry, which is going to end bad. I think Anderson will counter him. If Jake stays off, Anderson will stay off and just flink like he used to do and set himself up. And Listen, I I keep saying it, credit to Jake Paul, because this is not a fucking... The Woodley fight wasn't a gimme, but yeah. you you watch it... like if you, if, you, if you think about it logically, Woodley was a world champion UFC fighter, but... His striking was only so powerful in the UFC because of his wrestling. People couldn't take him down and were afraid to get taken down, so they they exposed on the feet. Yeah, he was never a crisp. He can box, of course, he can box, but he was never like a crisp striking specialist. Whereas Anderson, you got to remember, in his prime, there was talk of Anderson fighting Roy Jones Jr. in a boxing match for a world title yeah. until Dana White shut it down. Like that was that was legitimately a thing at one point. It was it wasn't. Like it was now, oh, is it? I'll, I'll jump over and fight. It, it was legitimately in the works, and it, and it just never come to fruition. And that was when Roy Jones was fighting guys like Carl Zaggy. And yeah. so I think it's good though, like, because there's not many people in your position who are like an MMA fighter or UFC fighter who a lot of people discredit the whole thing and think it's a joke. But when he's fighting people at his level who are MMA fighters or ex champions, you can't really look at it that way, can you? No, but, 100% not. He, he had to start somewhere with the influence of boxing. I'm not being funny, like. Anyone who's doing that influencer boxing who then moves up, they have to. They need to fight someone on their level to even get their foot in the door, don't they? They can't just. And look at his first fight, the amateur fight he had, um, or whatever, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. You know, the fucking influencer one. Compare him there to him now; it's a big difference. So he has mm. worked at it, and he has worked hard. But I think, um, I think Anderson might be a step too far too soon. I think a Tommy Fury would. I know they're saying, "Oh, that fight will never happen," now, but that is an easier fight. In Anderson Silva, who's oh, just yeah. who's just beat Chavez fucking Junior by decision. That's like uh, to me, that's the fight KSI should do. Tommy Fury, like if anything, yeah, I think that makes. I think a Tommy lot more Fury sense. would beat KSI though. To be honest, you. Probably, but I think that's kind of the step up. Because I don't than... think KSI is. He's not as technical as Jake, and I like, like Jake has legitimately got one punch power. Whereas if he does catch you clean, he's going to hurt you. Yeah. I don't think KSI has got that. I know he knocked these fucking idiots out on the weekend, but. Well, it was the third round he knocked the pencil out, so... Yeah, and the, the pencil. They did... Ca- not take a dive. They didn't take a dive. I'm not saying that, but... Well, they may have, but I don't think they did. Um, but they weren't like, fucking hell, he's nailed him and hurt him. It was like, yeah, they almost sat down and was like, oh, fuck this. Yeah. So, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens on that. When is that fight meant to happen? October? Yeah, I think it's October. Mm, yeah, so late we'll October, see. is That'd it? That'd be an interesting one. Yeah. Mate, at the minute, I don't know what it seemed... It's like to you, but it seems like every weekend there's fucking something. And and the big fights, so even more and more big fights are happening. Now, obviously, we've got, we've got Nate, then we've got um, the MSG card. If that happens in October, we've got, I'm sure there's UFC, Abu Dhabi, UFC yeah. Abu Dhabi, uh, Islam against Charles in October. Yeah, yeah, that's um, yeah, it's fucking stacked at the minute. It's just relentless. Which is good for us. Yeah. Good for us. Plenty of content. About. Right, what's next? I um, don't know if you want to go over this or not, but... I see the UFC is suing Bisping's media, whoever did his film. Sorry, before we go into that, this is how many knocks to the head I've had because my eyesight used to be fucking wicked and I cannot make out any of the words. You can't see that, can you? No, not a single word. 
Word, sorry. Um, no, what happened there? I haven't, I haven't, uh, I haven't seen too much on that. I kind of only seen the headline, but I'm pretty sure uh, in Bisping's latest film that they've put out, I can't remember the name of it. His documentary. Or His documentary. Yeah, the, sorry. Um, Come about a year or so ago, we had like. Um, yeah, he, did, he went around and did a little pr- uh, promo about it, but yeah. apparently. Well, they're suing him for that. Apparently, because he hasn't got the copyright for some of the footage that they used from the fights. I almost assumed that they'd give him that because of who he is and he works for the company. And Yeah, well, they're not like suing him directly, but the people who made the documentary are getting sued by the UFC. Oh, my God. Which I know is crazy because... And then the UFC are just taking loads of flack over it because they're like, this guy has lost an eye for your company. You're not going to let him use a Yeah, like, come on, fucking... It's not like he's fucking slagged the UFC off for years either and then, and then got, like... He's still working there, so... He works like, for the UFC, like you say, he's former champion. He's lost his eye. Made the company millions. Like people don't understand. Back in the day, Bisping used to make the UFC millions and millions. Still does now. You know, works from his podcast is mainly UFC based. Mm. He's pretty much come on, let him have a fucking. I'm sure he would pay for it. You know, if they said, yeah. "I'm now all well, up. You didn't buy the car, but you need to pay for it." I'm sure they fucking made a lot of money on that film where they could say, "All right, then use your X amount. I don't need to fucking sue the film, don't yeah. f- or I'd- at least don't make him take it out of the film because." It all, it does make the film like look at the McGregor film. Imagine you took all the UFC footage out of that. Yeah, I know. Maybe it's one of them. Uh, it's, a, it's an odd one. Maybe it's just the lawyers just going after it. Isn't it? It's all paperwork, I expect. Yeah, maybe there's just something he didn't do. Or oh, for, I know. I it's know. It's not like, even him, is it? At the end of the day, he's probably no. not even got the say on. I make sure you get the copyright on that. There's no way he's got that sort of influence on that film. I know. Um, Bispin and Dana are like really. Cause I think Dana may have even been in the fucking documentary. Yeah, I think he was. So hopefully Dana can smooth. Uh, Smooth this one over for Bisping because yeah. he doesn't deserve to be sued for that. You know, yeah. it's like it's a great. It's, if I'm watched it, go and watch it. It's a brilliant watch. The, uh, the I, my story or something like that is called, and it's on Amazon Prime. I think it is. So. Yeah, I haven't seen it. Like, but I think I seen your old man. Oh, he was it's, talking about. It's it. a brilliant watch. It's it's a brilliant watch. It's very similar in a way to similarly set out to the McGregor one. Yeah. Um, but obviously, it's a little bit less behind the scenes stuff. But yeah, go watch. Radio. Well. Yeah, there we are. All the best, Bisping. Uh, what's next? USADA testing Paolo Costa the morning of the weight cut. Uh, not the weight cut, the weigh in, wasn't it? Weigh in, yeah, that's stupid. Like, <laughs> he's not got much piss in him then, has he? This, like, and I, and I could, I could tell. Um, I don't know if I'm not telling stories, but fuck, I'll tell them anyway. Um, they are hard work, USADA. Like, you, they did it Usman fight week. They turned up six a.m. one morning. Um, they did the Volkanovski. I know a story of. Um, when he fought all the way on Fight Island, they turned up at... So basically, you were fighting... In Fight Island, we were fighting on American time. So, well, before we go into Volcanos, I fought at Fight Island, obviously the first one. I was first right on the card, and that was 3 a.m. in the morning. So it would have been about 10 p.m., maybe a little bit early, 8 p.m., 9 p.m. I was fucking sleeping, obviously, getting to sleep in for the fight, and you saw to knock the door, woke me up to test me, and I'm thinking, you know, body clock is shot to bits. I'm fighting in a couple of hours. Do you have to test me? Like, do you have to wake me up to test me? Because you're not just fucking... Sleep's a massive part of the performance. Oh, my God. And so Volkanovski had a similar thing. They, from what I've seen on a podcast or an interview, I think I've seen, they, so they knocked the door um, to wake him up to test. His coach answered the door and said, he's sleeping. And they're like, oh, well, we need to wake him up to test him. And he was like, you're fucking mad. He's like, we're not fucking waking him up. He's like, he's, he's literally got the biggest fight of his life in in three, four hours' time. He, He's sleeping, and they're like, "If you don't wake him up, then his county does a missed test. The fight will be off." And they're like, "You can't be, you can't be for fucking real." Why don't you just sit there until he wakes up? Well, exactly. It? Like if you know he's in the bed, sit in the room with him. It's no different to like because basically, if they turn up and you can't can't piss straight away, they've got to sit and wait with him. So just sit out. If you know he's in the room, just sit outside the room or sit in the room. Um, like I don't think he's not gonna. If he is on juice and he's not gonna have kit in the room with him, is he? Four hours before the fight to to be able to kind of. Uh, you know, crazy. and don't mind, I can get why they're testing Costa, but 6 a.m. on the morning of the weight cut is a bit, seems a bit much to me. Um, Maybe that secret juice got their back up a little bit. Like, do it the day before the weight cut, or do it, even do it the day of, not the day of the fight, or do it after the weight cut kind of thing. Um, really hydrated or something, isn't it? Yeah, like you use your head a little bit. I mean, there's so many stories you have, so many fighters. Because, um, like, sleep is a big part. I had a. I don't even see my Instagram so the other day, um, yesterday, Thursday, one day a week, Monday to Saturday, I get a lie-in, is a 
Thursday. Every other morning, I just get up at, at six thirty with my missus. I go to work. I, I go to the gym when she goes to work. Thursday, because I have um, a sparring session at nine in the morning. I always have a lay in. Some lady, fucking pitch black, knocking at the door. And I'm half asleep. And I'm like, what the fuck's that? <laughs> get a camera on my phone. You saw at six a.m. at my door, and I'm thinking, it's such a big part of recovery. Your sleep, like, because who's to say? How do they know I didn't train till 10, 11 p.m. last night? Didn't go to bed till 1, 2 o'clock. You know, there's got to be easier. And the majority of the time, they'll come to the gym and whatever. And I know why they do it, because they, they need you to be a little bit dehydrated to be able to test the sample. Obviously, when you sleep, you dehydrate a little bit. And obviously, 90% of people wake up in the morning, don't they, needing, needing a piss. Um, but fight, I think fight week and weigh-in day and stuff like that, we got we got to make it. I know a fighter who um, weighed in on Fight Island. They turned up to test him after the weigh-in, literally right after the weigh-in. And he was like, I've been cutting weight for a day. You know, you better yeah, come up and like, He said yeah. it took like six or seven hours for him to go. And it's like, well, cause, which it does. Like, people don't understand that. When you um, when you do a test, you start, you've got to fill up so many mil of um, urine. And basically, when you've had a weight cut, it can take a good few hours for that to process through your body. And... When it does process, it doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna you're gonna be able to produce the full amount. So, what's your missus thinking when there's random guys turning up to get, well, get a pot? Uh, that's why I always like. always check the camera, and I said, "Oh, you saw us at those." And I think it was like, "Oh, for fuck's sake," or something <laughs> like that. So I was like, "I'll take him in the kitchen then." Is it? She's like, "Yeah." <laughs> so uh, yeah, you saw it's great. We need you solder in the sport because we you do need to keep it clean. Um, but let's use our heads a little bit. You know what I mean, do we need to be waking fighters up on weigh-in day and fight day and fight week? You know, go and see them any other time throughout the day. Yeah, they just have that overtime, and they probably on double time that time <laughs> in the morning or something. They're playing the system, right? Um, Till tweeted out this week that Leon versus Masvidal in the UK is bigger than Leon versus Kamaru at the moment. What do you think about that? Oh, um, probably sells more. Mm. probably sells more because of the incident back in 2019 um, I know he's lost his last three but he is a big name in the sport Mars Vidal in terms of star power anyway um, but it doesn't make any sense really because Mars Vidal's coming off three losses I think two, albeit mine two to lose, two to man, lose man. went to Kobe yeah. so it's not like he's losing to nobody he's, he's still very much in the mix Um it always helps when you've got that star power. It's kind of like McGregor. You know, you, McGregor hasn't fought for a year or so now. Mm. He hasn't won since he beat Cowboy, but he could probably walk in tomorrow and have a title shot because he's got that star power. And Masvidal's not quite on the level of McGregor, but he's he's, he's probably top four biggest yeah. draws in the UFC. So, yeah, it probably does more pay-per-views, um, but it doesn't make any sense, really, does it? you got Usman, who's just defended his belt five times. Um, was is pound for pound or was pound for pound number one uh, before the fight? Uh, never lost in the UFC before the fight. He's already beat him. Was as a well twenty odd uh... fight win streak or something like that? Yeah. Um, a tied Anderson Silva's win record, I think, or was one away, and has already beat uh, Masvidal twice, and has already beat Leon, so it's like one one. So it doesn't really make a lot of sense. But as we know. Things don't always make sense in this sport. Doesn't Nate V comes out really make any sense? Not After comes out, just it? beat Gilbert Burns. No, it does maybe that's what they'll do is maybe they'll pull in Leon versus Masvidal because Usman's probably got to have so many weeks or months. Yeah, off. but I don't think Leon will fight unless it's next year in London anyway. No, so I think I'm trying to think what it is. It, it'll be a knockout, so it'll probably be for Usman. I would guess six months before he can fight. They'll obviously let him spar after like 180 days, I think. Oh no, oh, fucking hell. No. 90 days, is it? 90 days. Yeah. So he could, you know, it could, well, work out timing wise fine. You know, he's not beat up or nothing, Usman. I don't think he's he done a video and said he's not banged up. He's just obviously have to deal with it with a concussion. Um, so we'll, I guess we'll see. I, I, Even if that fight is not ready, I don't see that they'll put Maz Vidal in next. I think Kobe or. A Kamzat or a Nate is going to go in before Mars Vidal. Yeah. yeah well, Nate's not going to go in. Nate, Nate, Nate wins or loses, he's gone. Yeah. But if Kamzat wins, I think it'll be Kamzat if Usman can't make it. 
Uh, I think uh, Masvidal just need, he only needs one win, and I don't think it needs to be against yeah, any yeah. of them either. It could be well. There's rumors flying about of him and Gilbert Burns and yeah. so that, it, that would do it, wouldn't it? But again, that's not a fucking easy fight. Gilbert's I, fucking I don't a beast. Think, I don't. Well, I wouldn't put my money on him to win. That, if I had to guess, I'd say Gilbert will come out and try and put the wrestle on him as well. Yeah. Um, but again, we can't fall into the trap because we do. We do. Everyone does it because he's lost his last few matches. Now we haven't seen him win for. We kind of think, oh yeah, Gilbert will smash him, but. But then, yeah, you see him against Nate and how well he performed in that. Yeah, fight, and that's right? what I'm saying. It's like mm. we all often feel sometimes like like people switch it up. It's like because he's lost a few, we forget about all his wins. You know, I see um, even in my fight when I got leaked, so many people in the comments, and I try not to read the comments, but you do get caught up in it. And so many people in the comments is this is an easy fight for Kyle. I'm not honest. Like if I had won the last fight. Those same people will be saying something completely different. So because someone picks up a loss, we do, and it's the same. Look at Anthony Joshua. Yeah. Everyone knows, like, yeah, he's robotic. He was never no good. He was he was nurtured. He's like, fucking nurtured. He beat everyone, like. He's won the world title two times. Mm. He's got three losses. He's lost to Andy Ruiz, who he then went on and, 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 and smashed. And he's lost twice to the pound for pound number one in the world. And we're both fairly, com- like, the first fight, the second fight was, was competitive, right? Right, where everyone won or lost. But because of those three losses now, people kind of think, ah, yeah, no good. Yeah, which is crazy. Whereas if you go back, when did he left last fight, Usyk? So if we go back 12 year, months ago, before he fought Usyk the first time, people were calling for him to fight Fury. Mm. For the one that's the the world title. And it's, you see the same year. So if we went back to this time three years ago, and we was like, oh, Masvidal against um, Leon, or Masvidal against uh, Gilbert, we'd be like, oh, yeah, that'll be a hell of a fight. So recency bias, though, isn't it? it is Every, everyone's bias. just looking at the last thing they see. Yeah. Like you were saying with your comments about your fight, no one's looking back at this. Sixteen, is it? 16, before then, yeah. like it's crazy how they yeah. didn't even do that. People, but... straight, that's, that's just the internet for you. But I also think Masvidal's got a lot of illegal issues with Kobe going on, so yeah. maybe they gotta get that worked out first. But Probably. I wouldn't say not to Masvidal versus Leon. I'd, I'd definitely be up for watching it. Yeah. I'd be up for going to try if I was in London, like hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent. Try and go and see that. But uh, what else? What else? Oh yeah, Drake has fulfilled on Paddy's watch. He's got yes. his watch. Yes, Did you see that. Yeah, I seen the um someone put on Instagram. I don't know if it was Paddy or uh, Molly or maybe even being Graham because he got Molly one as well. Yeah, um, yeah, but good on him. So he should. Yeah, yeah. You can't go saying that stuff and not. So sure he through, should. He's got plenty of money. He won plenty of money doing that bet and. Uh, yeah, it's a cool little. Um, it's cool that people like Drake and I associated with the sport. Anyway, in it, so just props it up. It's gotta it? be. Imagine being fucking party house surreal. That's gotta be though that the uh, the Drake's bought him a Rolex. Yeah, yeah, it's gotta be a weird feeling in it. I wonder how he's like. He just seems to be taking it in his stride. But I wonder how all this like, like extra fame he's got in the last six months is. Do you know he, he strike like I I know I don't know him like I wouldn't go as far as saying know him really well, but I've had. I've known Paddy for a couple of years and um, me and him and Molly and everyone, we've always got on and when we're at the same shows, we always have a good good laugh and stuff. So I don't really know him, but it, he just strikes me as the type that, that is, means, you know, it's a second nature to him. It's kind of like, he always says it, doesn't he? He always says, I, I knew this would happen. So, and I know it's only going to get worse. So it's kind of like, you, yeah. you just... You could visualise it anyway, so it's not yeah. such a shock. You know, it must be nuts being him because he can't go anywhere now. I think everywhere he goes, he has security with him. Um, that's got to be so weird. He's kind of like it, in America, probably not so much. He's probably not so bad because, as famous as he is, America's fucking a different ball game. Um, but I bet over you when he's in, I bet he can't just pop to the shop no more or pop to to Tesco. You know, if he, I bet he's got to have people come with him to make sure he's always oh, got to send someone, which is insane when you think yeah. about it. I think that would, that would get to me. I reckon, like I think it would do my head in. Well, again, it's great. I mean, the money he'll make as a format is great, but I suppose it could could get old fast. Like, you know, there's no going back either. It's I, not like you can, uh, you can turn no, it off, like, is like, it? I've, I've, may I have it on a minuscule level in terms of where he's got it on. In terms, of, like, I may pop the to the test and I'll see someone and and they'll want to have a chat. But imagine doing that and there's 30, 40 people will start wanting pictures yeah. and th- and you've literally, yeah, you literally just popped it to get a meal deal or something like that. So they'd be taking photos of what you got. And yeah, it. and that's where it become. I, t- I tell you another one I've seen. Do you see him way on steve podcast? Yeah, yeah, that's another he's, one on the list, actually. I was going to get you to take What was that. he, £206.5? Yeah, fucking hell. £50. Heavy, just, just getting into that heavyweight bracket. 
Uh, we'll give him some credit because he did have his clothes on and it was probably <laughs> heavy shorts. Probably in the middle of the said, day. Like... So call it about two o two, but that's still good fucking bulk from uh, from the scouser. Yeah. So I wonder what his training is like then in between. Like obviously he keeps going back to America in between camps, doesn't he? Well, he's out in America, I mate. Mean, I think from what you make of his Instagram and stuff, he is training. Obviously, not how he probably would if he was back home. I think he's probably doing. You know, he may do a day of training, but he's that kind of like he is that much of a star now. It seems as if he's got media every other day. He's, you know, he's doing Mike Tyson's podcast, and he's doing Steve O's. Then, then he's doing his own podcast with Dave Portnoy. Then he's yeah. Then he's in Disneyland, and yeah. it's like fucking. I bet it's hard for him at the minute to train when he's because he's out there obviously for he's out there to to do a bit of a media tour, mm-hmm. isn't he? To to keep promoting himself, so it's gotta be fucking wild for him to try and fit training then around all that, and, and obviously he's out there on all day as well. So. Well, what I thought was cool, I seen him do. He had that Laird Hamilton on his podcast. Have you ever heard of him? No, I haven't. He's like a surfer dude, right? right? He, yeah. went, he went on Joe Rogan and everything. He's like a world champion surfer. He's in his fifties. He's all about health and nutrition and everything. I just never seen that podcast coming. I watched that one and yeah. I just thought it was great because I was like, "The hell's he doing with him? Like, it's completely random." But yeah. He went went to his house, did a workout, and everything. That's my. Uh, that'd be a good. That's a good one for anyone to watch, like for sure. He's living a he's living a mad old life at the minute, isn't he? Yeah. And. Uh, I, I see him talking about he wants to fight again for the end of the year as well. So I know Molly's fighting on MSG. So we'll see. We should uh, it should be released soon if he is fighting. I guess because obviously the end of the year is closing in on us. Yeah, definitely, mate. Be uh, be interesting to see who they put him against now, wouldn't it? Really, because is it is it time for top fifteen? Do you think? Or I don't it? think it's time for a top fifteen just yet. I think they will give him a a step up, a, a more well known name. Um, trying to think, maybe maybe like a. A veteran, like a cowboy or a Joe Lozon, who's kind of coming to the end of their career, that, that they can carry on building his... Yeah. But, again, to be honest, he doesn't fucking need that, because he's that big of a star already anyway. It's not like he needs a cowboy to boost his profile. It doesn't matter who he fights, No, he if could, he, his name's on the card. He could fight... Um, you know, he could fight a guy who's just signed... He could fight a Mason or a Figlack who's yeah. just signed for the UFC, and it would have just as much buzz as if he was fighting a cowboy or a top 15. I'd love to see him and Mason fight, to be honest, just from a personal, like, well, yeah, oh, like well. a local level. Like, they were probably due to fight on Cage Warriors. Yeah, well, they, they? they were kind of cross paths a couple of times um, coming through Cage Warriors mm-hmm. and um, Mason. Well, they, if Paddy weren't such a star and Mason didn't lose his last one, they'd kind of be at the same, yeah, you know, the same sort of thing, wouldn't they? But I don't think that, that fight will end up happening um, unless it happens in years to come in the top 15 or whatever. Yeah. I wonder what's next for Mason now. Like, I wonder um, should get one more. Should he? Do you think to see to see where he goes? Or? Well, yeah, I think his um, I think his contract's up. I think that you know, if providing he had a four fight because he's had his four fights, unless he'd resigned and not said, or unless he'd had a five fight. Um, but he'll have one more. They they won't fucking. I can't see him getting 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 rid of him. Um, even his two losses have been barn burners, haven't they? And yeah. you know, you know, he's always in for a good fight. I think. He's um, I had a little chat with him a couple of weeks ago. He's due to go back to America soon, <coughs> and uh, I don't know if he's going to fight for the end of the year or what. Yeah, you all. Oh, I, I'm kind of like early morning gutted for him. Not not because of like his fights and whatever, just because he came in with like quite a lot of hype, didn't he? And I think he could have been like quite a big name. Well, it's a blessing and a curse, isn't it? That hype train because he came in as the double champ. He was the first double champ since McGregor, which is great because. Think of all the comparisons that are drawn. Oh, this guy is a double champ like McGregor was and blah, blah, blah. But then at the same time, because of that hype, you're kind of straight in the mix with with, with the killers. And you like that Mike Davis for a first fight was, was a monster. Um, he had the bad luck then, didn't he, with... Um, what's his name? Patrick, was it? Patrick. And then the third fight, he, he fought a guy who's now a featherweight, but he's, he's on a really good run. And then also he's unlucky in his last fight. So... He's just not quite having the rub of the green at the minute, but um, yeah, he'll just, persevere, I'm sure. Same with Paddy now, for instance. I, I still think he's going to be a star no matter what, but if he loses his next fight, and it is against someone who no one's ever heard, it does go down a little bit, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it will it's slow just, things, obviously. Way, yeah. um, and that's the same wherever you are. Again, I was listening to an Eddie Earn interview yesterday, and uh, he was talking about Josh was the biggest draw in, in, in boxing, and uh, the, the, the commentator was kind of like, well, really, after after he's lost two of his last three? Yeah. And he's like, yeah, yeah. And it's like, well, no, it doesn't matter how big of a draw he is, as you pick up a couple of losses, 
your your momentum and your drawing ability. It does start to dwindle a little bit. Like even McGregor, as maybe McGregor not so much because of he is a fucking legitimate worldwide celebrity. But <laughs> but Ke- even like Kevin Holland, for instance, like he was starting to yeah, become a draw, wasn't he? Like but then he, he lost even, the couple. Mars Vidal. Yeah. Like the Mars Vidal and, and um, Usman the first fight. I bet the I bet the the fight against Kobe didn't draw off as much interest in terms of moment as, and as and that was a grudge match and mm. and we knew they hated each other but I bet that didn't draw as big as the first Usman fight. No, I agree. I agree and because th- because of the losses. And now you're looking at him and you're thinking, ah, oh, he's gonna fight Burns. I oh, probably won't win that. So every, like instantly, like you, you say, it's that, it's that know, recency yeah, bias recency again. Bias. He only needs to like fly and knee Burns out of there, and he's everyone's and back, he's back on the train. The isn't he? It's the same with. Um, it was the same with fucking uh, what's his name, Nate, wasn't it? You know, I I know he didn't he didn't win his last one against Leon, but had he not landed that punch in the last thirty seconds, you kind of be like, ah, you know, Nate needs to go back on the light. Wait, or where, where does Nate yeah. go from here? Because he's you know he's kind of got outstruck there for five rounds, but because he ended up landing that last punch, is that recent? Oh, he's still a fucking machine. Um, that's that's what gives him this chance in this Kamzat fight. That's what everyone's looking at and exactly. going exactly. Even the Kamzat thing, like, and he's coming off a win. Because that Burns fight was a little bit close, people there's already people like, oh yeah, but he's not as a machine like like we used to think. Humanized he's, he's still him, didn't human. it? Yeah. But it's like yeah, but apart from that, let's look at his other fights. He's been pretty fucking good. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's a recency bias, like you said. But yeah, it, well, I, f- I think we're out of uh, topics there, mate. Anything else you want to add before we wrap we're it out up? Of topics, fucking hell, I've uh, we flew for that. No, nothing too much. Um, obviously, the Patreon's going well. Thank you to everyone who signed up already. Um, if you want, if you want to sign up and you're not already signed up, jump on and have a look. We got what have we got now? Like four different training videos out. We've got the the Cage Warriors one two one four two one four two <laughs> Cage Warriors one four two behind the scenes video is now out on there. Um, we've got a podcast coming in the next week or two. The exclusive one. We're gonna we're gonna try and pull. Um, we we'll pull a guest in for the YouTube podcast, and me and Joe are going to do a little Patreon one where we get a little bit more raw, as they say. And we've also got a training video of of, of Joe doing a bit where uh, where we can look that, at it as well. That'll be coming this week. I think I need to put that together. I've been holding off because it's embarrassing to watch back. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want to edit it. I don't Predictions want to edit it. for this weekend. I know the video will will be out by the time we. Uh, sorry, I know the fights will be over by the time this gets out. But let's see if we're right. Who, who, who are we going? We won't bet on it because it don't, there's no real buzz to it. But I, I think um, I think the main event, you know, Tyre's got to win by KO. He's not. I don't think he's going to outpoint him. I just don't see that happening because of how technically sound Cyril Garn is. Um, it's a tough one, isn't it? And it sounds weird to say, Tyre's a better striker than Francis, technically. But genetically-wise, in terms of like height and reach and stuff, Cyril's got all, all the kind of answers for him there. Um, I think it looks like the Garn Lewis fight. In I think a way. so. I, I'm gonna go. Uh, I go Garn TKO if I had to bet. I know. I'm just gonna go Thai KO because it doesn't mean anything. I'm not gonna <laughs> lose any money on this one. I think Whitaker beats Vittori by decision. I think he finishes him because Vittori's hard as fuck. Um, I think I agree. It. I think I agree with you on that one purely because I think Whitaker is top of the heap. He just can't get the crown back. Unfortunately, yeah. I would love to see him. Be champion again, to be honest, but I bet he's praying that Pereira knocks out Izzy, and he probably I bet he's praying. Yeah, yeah. He's thinking, I'll just fucking go in there and wrestle Pereira. Then. You'll get another shot again. Then. <laughs> exactly. Did you, did you see the photo of that Pereira? He's massive, fucking isn't he? Jesus Christ. Well, he put he put a video up or a picture up. I seen on um, I seen it on Instagram. He run his and his current weight. I think he's nine percent body fat, mm. and his current weight is two hundred. 23 or something. 220 yeah. something pounds. So Insane, fucking... isn't it? Him next to Reyes, you're just thinking, I was like. what's he got now? Like 10 weeks ish? Yeah. So Good 185. He, like. He's so lean as well. Like, he's 200 fucking 10 or uh, 20 pounds. And he's lean. He's lean as fuck. So, don't know where he's going to lose it from, but no doubt he'll do it. The Brazilians are fucking nuts. I didn't recognize him with the hair either. No, I know. I he's like, uh, that guy. He pulled a, pulled a quick one on us. But yeah, other than that, thank everyone for watching, subscribing. Please remember to share, like, the more we get uh, the traction going, the more stuff we can get out. And again, Patreon is in the description. So if you do want to support us on there, it's very much appreciated. We're still working towards the 50 first subscribers or something like that, wasn't it? Yeah. The giveaway. Um, 
And we do a giveaway soon, didn't we? Uh, yeah, probably in a, in a month, is it? Yeah, probably. so get, get on there whilst uh, strike whilst the iron's hot, people. Nice, nice one, guys. Catch Take you all care. soon. Yeah, that was what we trapped for. Some man, they want to chat shit till I knock a mate like I'm Jack Shaw. Rolls hat, rolls back, my flow shack like a hacksaw. Get in.